Hi everyone, thanks so much for having me today. Um, today I want to talk about something very exciting, uh, software supply chain security. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a open source project called Sigstore, which is a developer first uh, tool that helps to make security a little bit easier for developers. Uh, to give you just a little bit of background so you know who I am, um, as uh, I was introduced, I'm Lisa and I've been working at the intersection of community and education and open source for a while. I am currently the head of developer education at Chainguard, which is a software supply chain security startup, and we're working to make the uh, security more uh, default. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work around building out resources for developers. Um, I also have uh, a few books on Python that are free and open access. Uh, previously, I worked in research um, and higher education, and as part of the Digital Humanities Lab at MIT, I built quite a few Django apps to support humanities research, and I'm currently also working on the documentation efforts for SIGSTORE, and that's the project I'm going to be talking about today. So if you find yourself at this uh, tourist attraction. It's the gum wall at Pike Place Market in Seattle. Uh, you might be chewing gum. You might take your gum out and put it onto the wall, right? But maybe you would not take off one of the already chewed gums and put it in your mouth to start chewing on that. Uh, I think most people would try not to take the risk of getting sick from an unknown bacteria in this chewed gum that they don't, they randomly found. They don't know where it came from. Uh, they don't know who chewed it before them. Uh, however, this is essentially what many developers are doing with software. You're working on a software project. You want to leverage the code that other developers worked on, which is great. Like We want to continue to build upon other people's efforts. Uh, but you might not be actually fully investigating all those libraries and all those packages that you've used. Um, you might not, maybe you're checking your immediate dependencies, but are you checking the dependencies of those dependencies? Uh, say you're a user of software, right, and you're running software in your machine, like are you actually checking to make sure you know the provenance of all that software? Uh, this has been a de facto way of kind of working in software and running software for a while, and this is something that I'm also guilty of, uh, but what do we do with this? Like, do we actually want to take this software that we don't know where it came from and just start running it in our machine, uh, deploying it, giving it to our users? Uh, so this is a little diagram of the software supply chain and vulnerabilities and attacks have been increasing in recent years. Uh, it's become very important where the the U.S. government uh, recently passed a bill in the House that would forbid the Department of Defense from procuring uh, software applications that contain a single uh, CVE, which is short for Common Vulnerability or Exposure. There's been increased awareness of uh, high-profile attacks like Solar Winds, Code Cov, Log for Shell are some of those. There's been typo squatting attacks and things like that. And attacks and other security issues can can exist all across the software supply chain. So there's the dependencies, uh, there's the code that you're writing, uh, there is the, the build and deployment and going all the way to the end user. Uh, this is a recent report from Sonatype that estimates software supply chain attacks are increasing exponentially year over year. And for those of us who are working in the Python space, what's important to keep in mind is that uh, PyPI is growing faster than many other programming language package repositories. Uh, so it's very critical for those of us working in the space. And uh, this is also to say that the software supply chain is, pretty, is a pretty recent concept. So what if we take back the approach to a older, more established industry and think about security in those terms? Uh, so say you want to open a new bank account and you get to the bank. What are they going to do to make sure that you are able to open that bank account? They're going to ask you for your ID. 
the bank is not the, the entity that issued you this ID. The ID probably came from your local government or a national government, but the bank still accepts this ID. It's because they trust the entity that is giving you that ID. Uh, this attests to your identity. There's a root of trust that underlies all of this. Once you open your bank account, uh, the bank account number will be part of the database or log or ledger in the older days. And that is what is now tied to your identity. There is this, this backend infrastructure, so there is a way to, to say that this um, ID number, the bank account number, and your own who your identity is are all tied together. So when you get new money into your account or you're debiting from your account, you know that it's all coming in and out of the right place. Now that you have a bank account, you can get a bank card, you might use a PIN, you might use a signature to issue payment to others, and this signature attests to your identity, and this is all because it's underneath this whole entire root of trust that a few different bodies are all cooperating with. So this is pretty similar to how Sigster works, which brings identity, your ID, a certificate authority, the governmental body that issued your ID, and a transparency log, which is the bank account database, together to enable verification and trust to exist at each step of the software supply chain. Uh, so SIGSTORE has a few different projects underneath it, um, and I'll go through them a little quickly. So there's Cosign, which is the way that developers can identify themselves and they can sign software and, ver and others can verify that those signatures exist. Uh, Recore is the transparency log, so think about that as the ledger or the database. Um, you could also think about it as like a bulletin board where people are putting post-its on and other people can inspect those post-its and they'll never, they'll never go away, uh, but you'll have to use your own judgment about those, whether those post-its are correct or not. Uh, Fulcio is the certificate authority and this connects with OpenID Connect tokens, um, OIDC. So when you authenticate through Google or GitHub or Microsoft, for example. This is like a notary where they are providing you a short-lived key pair that attests that uh, all of these things are true at a certain time. And then the newest project is GitSign, which allows you to keylessly sign Git commits uh, and you don't need to use GPG keys. Uh, so Sigstor is working across some parts of the software supply chain to uh, establish this root of trust and uh, make things more transparent so that we could verify claims and also attest that we are who we say we are. All right, now I'm going to try to do a little demo here, but I'm not sure how this is going to work with the two screens. Let's see. So this, um, this is a Django image and the link, and I'll share these slides out on Twitter, but it's basically there's a Docker file, there's a Docker Compose YAML file and the requirements.txt. I'm gonna be using this um, ttl.sh as an ephemeral uh, Docker registry. And I will copy and paste these. So basically, I have, I'm already in this directory that has this container in it. I'm building the image and then I'm pushing it, I'm gonna push it to the ttl.sh and the 2h tag there is just uh, saying there's, I'll keep it up for two hours. And then I will push it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this software artifact. So a software artifact, we could think of it as a container, uh, but it could also be like a binary. It could even be a readme.md uh, file in your GitHub repo or something like that. Uh, but basically, uh, Cosign will sign those, any of those uh, software artifacts. And right now, the way to keylessly sign is with this Cosign experimental flag, but soon that is going to change. And what we wanna do now is to keylessly sign the certificate. Uh, Cosign also enables you to use keys, but if you don't need to use keys, uh, why, why bother? And then you log into SIGSTOR six, six with the OIDC Connect, and you say, yes, I want you to sign it. 
And then it will push the signature to ReCore, which is the transparency log. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is to verify that claim. So say, say we're two different people and we want to see that this uh, container was indeed signed. And we could do that again with cosine. And it's the cosine experimental true flag again and cosine verify and we're passing in that, that um, container image again. There we go. So what we get back What we get back is that the cosine claims are validated, the existence of the claims in the transparency log was verified, um, and we get a, a, you know, a little bit of a messy JSON file because I didn't make it look pretty. Uh, but we also see that there's a, an entry that was created at the record transparency log. This is the entry number. Uh, so we could verify that those claims are true. So if you're a software developer and you want to share with other people that like indeed my Django container was signed, then you could share with people the, that transparency log or they could look up that container with cosine. So that's all great, right? But this doesn't automate anything, like that was kind of a manual process. So the good news is that we can, in fact, um, do this much more in a much more automated way. And we could do that with GitHub Actions. Um, I'm going to go through this uh, a little quickly because I already have this set up, uh, but I will show you where I am. Uh, so I have this repo. Oh gosh. So I have this um, Hello Django image repo. And what I want to do is to add my GitHub Actions, which will look like this. And in fact, maybe I will show you the test image. Um, So this is, um, we have the same image that we had before, and then we want to add these GitHub Actions into here. And basically what we're doing is, uh, the important parts of this are the ID token and writing, which ties back to the Fulcio Certificate Authority. So this is what is connecting the OIDC to um, the automated process here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is install Cosine as part of our action, and we could pin that release to a specific version of Cosine. And finally, what is going to happen is we're going to push this image up to the GitHub repository and uh, build the image and check that it's signed. So when you go through this process, and I'll give you all the resources you need, and this is my uh, Delusia store pull request, but um, if you go through and check about the signing the container image, you'll get all of this information back that the, the tr there was an entry that was posted in the transparency log. Um, because this is a public repo that is going to be using the public instance of ReCore, um, if you are working in a place where you're not, you don't want everything to be public, you could also set up your own instance of ReCore and have that all like all internally if you want instead. So um, this is the step through of doing this and I will share with you all the slides. So if you wanna go through yourself. And then, yeah, so you can confirm keyless signing and moreover, you could go do this cosine verify again. Here is my username. So here again, we see that it was definitely signed. Um, we have the full seal roots. Uh, we could actually make it big, better looking with that J cube um, over here. It's a little easier to read the JSON. But here it's very clear that we have the log index here, we have the log ID, 
um, we have the URL and um, all the data here. And this um, recore is all like a, all based on Merkle trees if you want to read more about it. And the other thing that we could do is we could use um, recore CLI to verify this too. So we would uh, paste in our log index and we could verify it this way as well. Oops. So we get, um, we get the data right from Recore in this case. So uh, if you're familiar, um, PyPI has recently been uh, asking for more security measures in place. Uh, so Python, I think, is really leading the way in making sure that dependencies and libraries are built more securely. Um, this is the PyPI dashboard as of today for the multi-factor authentication process that they're doing where they're, um, a lot of projects are opting into two-factor on their own. Um, critical projects are, are really opting in and they're moving really quickly. So it's really great news. Um, the other really great news is that PyPI is working to add more security features all around, not just the multi-factor, but they are also including um, artifact signing through SIGSTOR, and if you would like to learn more about this, I recommend this talk, and I have it in the notes uh, of this slide deck, Securing the Open Source uh, Software Supply Chain uh, by Justin Ingram, which was in at PyCon uh, in Salt Lake City earlier this year. Um, if you would like to learn more about SIGSTOR, I co-created this course with the Linux Foundation. It's free to take through edX, and it goes through all of the things I talked about much more depth than you could play with the tools. And uh, it's free to take on edX if you want the certificate. There's a um, Linux Foundation fee associated with it. And uh, finally, I just want to say that it's up to all of us to make sure that open source software is secure. And uh, it's important for making sure that the community is taken care of to start to think about bringing security into the development process and not tacking it in at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Ooh, bright lights. Uh, if we have any questions, raise your hands. We'll really pull the mic out. Hi. Um, how's the adoption so far? Like, would you know, do you know, like, the adoption, like, is, are a lot of developers like using it right now? Yeah, uh, so SIGSTOR, um, some, we have a number of indicators, right? So some of the things that we've been tracking have been uh, like the stars of repositories. So like Cosign um, has 2,600 um, stars right now. There's a lot of people who are using it in, in different programming language ecosystems. I think it could be more widely adopted, and as I mentioned, like PyPI is one of the leaders in the adoption space, but there's a lot of work in the Java community uh, as well. And there is going to be a SigSircon that's co-located with KubeCon next week at, um, yeah, in Detroit on Tuesday. Any more questions? Oh, oh, okay. Um, is this specifically signing containers, or does it sign anything else? Yeah, it could sign um, any software artifact. It is definitely, I think the people who developed it were thinking about container workloads specifically, uh, but I think uh, we we allow like signing of binaries and signing of like, yeah, readme files, text files. You could sign basically anything, and you could put it into the record transparency log. It's It's a matter of like what, how it is that you're packaging your software and how it is that people are consuming your software. And I would think about how you would, how you would sign it in a way that's meaningful for, your, for whoever's interacting with it. Yeah. All right, any more questions? If not, then thank you very much, Lisa. A small token of appreciation oh, from the organizing you. committee. Everyone welcome, uh, uh, thank Lisa for her talk.